My name is Paul Brown. Yeah, you may or may not already know that. Um, the reason why I'm here, I own an auction gallery called Gallery 63, and I had a television show, or I should produce two different shows relating to antiques and collectibles. I spent most of my life, geez, all my life really, analyzing, appraising, researching, that's what I'm a court uh, certified appraiser, and I enjoy going around the country. Uh, this is one of the things that I do for a living, but I actually do it for fun as well, is you know, looking at other people's stuff. And so I don't, by y'all asked a question earlier, I don't certainly know everything about everything. Nobody could, okay? There's, I mean, nobody could, seriously. So, but there, in the appraisal community, there are generalists and there are specialists, and I'm what's known as a generalist. You know, and a good generalist obviously has some connections with various specialists. And I always say, every time I do this, and it goes without fail, somebody, one of y'all have in your bag something that I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just how it is. Then nobody can know anything. And you're all, you're, you said you had one. I, I, the last time I went out, a couple of hours ago, the first one, the very first person got up here, and I was like, I have no, I know where the idea. But I do know where to look, and I know where to, you know. Further research and that sort of thing. So with that, well, I'm going to go and start. Would you like to start? Okay. What's your name? Hi, my name is Paul. Nice to see you. What you have there? Oh, great! I love that category. <laughs> Doesn't know what it is. I bought these when I was 17 years old from a from a second-hand store. Okay. Let me. Do you mind if I take them up here and take take a look here? And you, so you bought them when you were young at a second-hand store. All right. Store and I'm 80 now, so that's how Oh my, and do you remember what you paid for them? Oh, we have these two. Probably a quarter, you know. Huh. Yeah, they are. This one's missing its head, so this one used to, this one used to be better. It has no head. There's, oh, there's their there's little head. They are, uh, <laughs> These are what, what these are chess pieces. These are chess pieces made out of Chinese figures for the American market, made in China. Um, probably around the early 20th century, there was an infatuation. Well, I talked about it earlier today uh, with Orientalism, um, partly having to do with the fact that travel was getting more and more within the, the realm of the normal person, and the steamships were you know, very safe. The, the seas were relatively safe. In the early 20th century, there's a fascination with the Far East and the Middle East. Um, not so much now, um, but, but there very much was. So the American market loved what, what was called chinoiserie, which is a French word for Chinese stuff made to sell to non-Chinese people. Excuse me. So um, these were part of a chess set um, that were made with, with, with Chinese characters to sell to Americans, probably, or Europeans, but most likely Americans. I've, I've, if you had the complete set, I'm talking about value, you know, realistically, you know, this one's missing its head. They're not really worth much. They're cute little figurines. If you had a full set, you know, the full set and the board, you could have, you know, some serious money. Probably maybe $800 to $1,000 for the whole set. Um, yeah, fur is kind of, kind of hit or miss. I'm not sure how it is, you know, here out, out in Idaho, out west. But, but the way markets work, it has to do with where you are in a particular country, in, in, in a particular part of the world. So, like, in Atlanta, we sell a lot of, for example, um, Coca-Cola. Stuff, collectible, old advertising, the market is there. Um, in Scottsdale, Arizona, they sell a lot, sell a lot of antique classic cars because it doesn't rust in the day, so that's where that goes. In Atlanta, where I, where I come from, the fur, it's not so much, well, first of all, it doesn't get that cold. So there, we can have a huge part of it. Second of all, there's a sort of that weird political connotation, people get mad that you're wearing fur. You know, I, I'm not particularly of that bent, but there are those that are. So what that does, well, I know there's always, you know, there's one in every, there's one in every family. I can do it. it's always fun to Thanksgiving, right? But, um, so that, that, what that does, and you know, I don't really concern me what, what anybody's beliefs are on that, but what it does is it, it slims out the market. So you have a, you know, it's, no, no, I'm not, okay, honestly, that, that's good, because if I were to appraise it for insurance value, that's a different kind of appraisal. If I were to appraise it for insurance value, I would, I would appraise it at like $2,500. Because you to replace it to get a pad of this of this workmanship of you know this and certainly you probably would never be able to really officially you know replace it because it's basically one of kind of a gift and it's important to your heart but I would say you know twenty five hundred dollars would be a reasonable um, insurance appraisal you know to sell it probably less but then you can find a person that wants to buy it but to to appraise it for insurance value it's lovely I just keep my hands warm actually I'm like. You know, I'm, I, I'm kind of enjoying it, and I don't know how you kept it in such lovely condition this whole time, but good job on that. Uh, well, what, which pages did you tear out of the box? Why has it got a page missing? Box. Okay, yeah, and the Bibles are actually, there's a whole separate sub-market of collectibles. What is that? Is that all you have? Your grocery list in the Bible? Really? That's kind of funny, isn't it? All right. Uh, so, 
uh, you know, with, with the Bible, with any book, you always look, and, and your cover, uh, original cover is missing as well. So with books, books are a real tough market because the, the collectors of books are looking for perfect books. Um, Bible, of course, is the most published book in the history of published books. You know what number two is? You want to guess what number two is? Bible's number one. What you guess what number two is? It, no, it's good. Go with the wind, actually. You know, the second most published book in the world. I wish the cover was on there. Uh, if the cover was on there, I would estimate it at probably, I don't know, $75 to $125, as is, maybe a little less. What do you have here? What is this? Is it a cooler? I don't know if you have a refrigerator. Really? Strato Green's automobile refrigerator. So, okay, I have not seen one of these. But I mean, I can, I can look at it, I can speak to it, and I can probably tell you where to find that, how it should do it. looks like it doesn't ever look like it was maybe was it ever installed anywhere. It's never been installed. It's like new old stock, which is great in the collecting world. That would do what we call new old stock, stuff that, you know, is old but never been used. So if you have a basic time capsule, it's definitely clearly by style, by, by, um, by the style of it. Now, obviously mid-century American. I'm going to guess late 50s, early 60s. Probably might even have a date in there. 64? It was supposed to be for Cadillac. Oh, really? But we've never been able to find any other information. So you could carry ice in the car. This is in the golden age of drinking and driving. So you could stop. And then, this is back before they got all funny about that. You could get your ice cooler, you know? You might want to drink? Sure, I got a cooler right here. Um, and oh, look where it's made in, made in Louisiana. Shocking that. So, um, so that, that's pretty cool. I've never actually seen that. I think it's great because, again, it's never been used. Why do you have it? What, what, is, the, what is the story behind it? You have it just there. Are you a drinker and driver? No. No? Because this is handy for that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yard, yard sale? Uh, yard, yard sale. I, that's pretty cool. I, I, you know, I, I've not seen one. It's just called Stump Me, okay? So you win. And, yes, you get a prize. <laughs> that, that and five bucks to get you Starbucks, right? Um, but uh, I would guess, it's a pretty cool piece. I would guess if that came, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, one of a kind or interesting stuff that people haven't seen, you can tell a story about, you know, tends to make people big. I mean, from, coming from an auction gallery perspective, I would have enjoyed having that. I'm not saying that it would have rang the bell or made a ton of money, but it would have caused people to laugh. We got a good laugh out here. So in my opinion, if it makes you smile and laugh, it's got some value. My gut feeling, you know, you could probably sell that in an antique market. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that is popular. I mean, it's, it's what we call mid-century modern. The, the, it's sort of mid-20th century when we're trying to, you know, be all jet age and streamlining and the fins and the cars and the chrome and that look um, is, is very popular in, in, uh, in my hometown. So it would probably sell well. Some little hipster that likes to drink and drive there. But I, I would guess you could probably get um, $150, $200 for it. And I bet, I think what, what, what plays into that, if it was all beaten up, I wouldn't say that. I would probably just say it's a cute little novelty. But the fact that you have the original of this and the original you know, cables to hook it up, and um, you know, so that to me brings the value up. Because if it were just all beaten up, I probably would tell you, you know, nobody's going to want it. But I could actually see somebody wanting that. So, you know, like say 150 200 bucks. Pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, Sam and Kelly, you, you, why do you have this? Is this a uh, it, clown? It was my sister's ex-husband's father who lived in Ohio. My sister's ex-husband's father who lived in Ohio. Okay, I mean, okay, one of the most famous clowns of all time. Clowns are kind of funny because, like, you people either love them, right? You, know, you hear about that, that story of people running wild dressed like clowns? Did that, that make it out of here? That was big down where I live. Isn't that kind of weird? So, um, and, and this guy's probably, I would guess, he's probably close to 100 years old. Um, Probably his original clothes. Um, yeah, but I, he absolutely can be, but I would because the, the fact of the matter is he's not in bad condition for it. So if you, you look, I mean, look at most of his hair is still there. I, I would, I know, but I don't know that that, you know, he's kind of got the hobo thing going. That was sort of part of the whole look. So, you know, that, that kind of works with it. So I, I would guess, you know, I don't have, know a ton about clowns, I'll be honest with you. Clowns are not my specialty. But I mean, he's kind of cool, isn't he? I, I, if this came up for auction, though, I, I, I can't tell you this much. I, at my auction gallery, there are always, you know, when I, and I, I don't know if I had a quite, quite like this, but I've had, you know, various clown things. They always seem to, to sell pretty well. I would guess, I would guarantee you this would bring at least $200 at auction. But real, realistically, it's probably worth three or $400. But that, I, that would be my guess at auction between two and four. In my place, probably $250, $300. Okay, you know what these are? Okay, but you know specifically. They're part of whole sets. Right. 
They are for drinking wine, sake wine, rice wine to be specific. This is tea. Cups. This is tea. This one's wine. This is for doing, doing sake wine. Let's see what that is. Did you, have, did you have the whole set? Oh, look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's not necessary. I mean, the tea, yes, but the, the, this little pot, the heat of the sake is what. Right, which was made, which indicate here, take the, take the thing that When it says Japan, and it does, that means it was obviously, I need to say, I mean, Captain Obvious here, made in Japan. But it says that Japan, and instead, it was made for the American market. So, in other words, if it was made for the local market in Japan, it would be stamped Nippon. But since it was made for export, the, do, you have, do you have all that? Do you have all that? Yeah, that's spectacular. I, I'm glad you didn't bring it because you forget how thin you thought the other piece was thin. It's like paper thin, so I mean it's very delicate. Oh my, that's awesome. I wish y'all could see that. If you look up in the light, they, they were able to make this, this portrait of a, of a woman in there. And you can see it only in the light. That, that is spectacular. And you have a, is the whole set like that? that is, that's, that's great, that's good stuff. It's good. This is what you're not going to find in replacements because it, this is probably nobody's even. This hasn't been probably been in production in decades. My gut feeling for that set, it, it, you have you have all the, the pots and all those cups right there. And how about the stuff in the back? Is all that part? Is that the same pattern? Because I can't tell. Okay. Okay. I would conservatively estimate that set at fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so that would that would be conservative. I, you know, it's hard to say from a picture, but I can tell by the. Is, is it all in the same condition? You know, with no with no chips or anything like that. Yeah, e easily fifteen hundred dollars for the for the set for the aggregate set. Very nice. And it all has that that face at the bottom. That's so cool. That's good stuff.